Good morning, I'm Kate Diaz. I am a veteran math teacher from Manchester High School. I'm not an anonymous teacher, one who will proudly put her name on the statements in front of you. And I am currently president of the Connecticut Education Association. I am no stranger to the complexities of the decisions that have to get made when you're dealing with statewide situations. We represent 150 different districts with a great variety in their constituencies and a great many challenges. But what I can speak honestly and openly to today is the question that was asked, what are teachers afraid of? As probably one of the only people in the room that spent a year teaching with a mask, with students, spending a lot of time and energy, both in person, online, with students while they were dealing with all of the issues. Sitting with my colleagues as we worry about what does the future look like. I can tell you that what teachers are thinking about is how to keep schools open. They're thinking, how do I continue to provide as much as I possibly can? And to vilify that concern, I think, is a problem. Our teachers have been over backwards to do everything they can in the last two years to provide compassionate and caring and love to their students. And now as we kind of turn a corner, we've gone through a really difficult surge that was frightening. But when teachers showed up, they were there. They showed up every day, they got COVID, they quarantined, and they cared for their students all the way through. No one would be happier to say this is over than a group of teachers. But alas, it's not over. My teachers work in buildings that are not properly ventilated. They don't have the beautiful vents that we have in this room to suck air upwards. It's a very real working condition that we take for granted when we sit in this space, but doesn't exist in my teaching spaces. Teachers have to open their windows for ventilation which when it's negative degrees is a bad idea. So I ask you to think about where the teachers are at. They're sitting in spaces of primarily unvaccinated individuals in poorly ventilated areas, doing the very best that they can to get through an unprecedented situation. So I'd ask that you consider to maintain this mandate for just a little longer. I don't want to see this in perpetuity, none of us do. We look forward to the days where our positivity rates are low and our vaccination rates are high when we're dealing with students. That's just not where we are today. And so until we can get to the space where I can confidently look at my teachers and say, we're here, we're gonna be here and there's not gonna be any closures. I ask you to think about not squashing them in between yet another debate. They have really been pushed really to their ends, and they are trying their very best. But every debate that plays out, plays out in their classrooms. As another speaker mentioned, all the children come forward with their parents' beliefs. Thank you for your time, thank you for your hard work, and we appreciate you taking the time to think about us. Thank you. Johnson Delancey, followed by Meredith Wilson. Good morning, I'm Jocelyn Delancey. I am the Vice President of the Connecticut Education Association, fifth grade teacher. And like Kate, I am a teacher who did teach all year uh, in a mask with fifth graders in an elementary school. I'm fortunate to say that my school was able to teach in person last year from uh, September 29th all the way through the entire school year. And that is because we were able to use mitigation strategies, mask and stay safe what Connecticut teachers want is our schools open. We want to be able to be safe and care compassionately for our students. We know that there will be a time where we can say that this is over and this is enough. But right now is, is a little premature. We want to keep our schools open. We want to support our teachers. And of course, we want to care and support all of our students with all of the beliefs that they have and all of the needs that they have. And in order to do that, we need to be in person, we need our teachers healthy, and we need our teachers present and available to teach. So I, I thank you for the work that you do. I know you come to these meetings and care for every constituent's concerns, and I see you listening, 
and I know that there's a lot of weight on the decisions that you make. But in order to keep our schools safe, open, um, we need to keep this in place just a little bit longer. And then as we continue forward, we need to consider the things that will continue to keep our students safe, like indoor air quality, and making sure that we have highly sophisticated um, and caring educators in our classrooms. I thank you for your care and your concern, and thank you for listening to us today. Thank you.